Now I'm going to show you um, silicon mold making. Um, make sure you've got your pot and your scales. Uh, your pot is empty um, on the scales and you've zeroed it. Um, then we take the silicone. We just add the required amount. And you can see that it's it's quite thick and runs quite slowly. So just be careful when you're pouring it out that so you're not pouring too fast. Just pour very slowly and carefully. And once you've got the required amount, have a stick in your hand so you can just wipe off the rim of the tin so it doesn't run everywhere. So now we need to work out what our 5% is. So the 5% catalyst that we're going to put in, which is this, um, previously added uh, a pigment to it so you can you can make sure that it's mixed fully. Um, as soon as it's a, a consistent pink colour, you know that the catalyst is mixed in thoroughly. So we work out our 5%. So we just move the decimal point along to the left once, and that will give us our 10% then we could just half that figure and we know that that is 5% now we add the catalyst a little bit at a time just to make sure we get the right amount in. if you put too much in it will go off too quickly if you don't put enough in it um, it will take too long to set so you can see it's very thin on top it's much thinner than the actual silicon itself, the catalyst, so we have to be very careful when we're stirring it in at first. It's almost folding in the top layer of liquid into the thicker layer underneath. Making sure that we scrape the sides is very important because it's so thick it clings to the sides and we need to scrape that away so it mixes in thoroughly. Once the top layer is mixed in, you can mix a little bit faster keep remembering to scrape the sides too. If you hold your stick still and turn the pots you find it easier. Remember to scrape the bottom in the corners as well. Once we've been mixing for several minutes we'll notice there's quite a few air bubbles in the silicon itself so what we need to do is use this vacuum chamber we seal the lid Turn on the pump, uh, and that actually works by um, sucking out all the air out of the chamber, forcing the air bubbles in the silicon to expand and rise up. We'll make sure that both the valves are facing outwards first. This one is the, the intake valve, so that lets air back in, so we need to turn that one off, and then we'll see the needle rise around the dial. Um, as soon as it gets about here, we'll notice a change in, in, in the silicon. Um, it will be expand about five times its size, so we need to make sure that we're using um, a pot that's big enough to, to take the expansion. Now you see the silicon is rising to its highest point now. This is a critical mass point where the silicon itself can't be supported by the amount of air that's now trapped within it and collapses on itself, which is what you're seeing now. This whole process takes around um, five to eight minutes, depending on the volume of silicon that you use. Um, so now we, we need to switch off the exit of the air and turn on slowly the intake so we see the needle decrease. As soon as it gets to zero we can take the lid off and remove a silicon. It should be nice and smooth. So now we have our mixed silicon ready for pouring or using any way we need to. So there's a variety of ways we can use the silicon. We can use it, just simply pour it straight into a, a clay mold that we've made with our object inside. We can find a container um, and use that, just pour it straight in. 
or we can make one out of metal. Um, this is easy because you can you can melt the, the hot glue down the sides that I've used to stick it on with um, afterwards to remove the mould. But for this one I'm going to show you a skin mould. Now this basically entails pouring a very thin layer of silicon uh, over the master to begin with to create um, any kind of resin um, replica of, uh, of a mould that you want so you can create metal effects, stone effects, clear, um, whatever you want to do. So it just, it just frees you up um, with the possibilities that, that, are, that are available to you um, when we do this kind of mould making. So we simply start by pouring on a layer down the centre of the face quite slowly we need to be careful that we don't get any air bubbles trapped underneath the surface at this stage because uh, it will affect the, the quality of the mould we've got plenty of working time um, the pot life of silicon is, is about four hours before it starts to gel up so we've got plenty of time to apply this so you slowly work it over the surface, um, taking care that we observe any air bubbles that are trapped beneath the surface. You can see um, if you if you can see them, um, just quickly blow on them and they should pop. So that's the first layer. Once this is set, after about six to eight hours, um, I've mixed up a, a, another batch here, which I'm going to add into. Um, into this uh, an agent called Fixed Tropic. Um, now what this does stops it running basically so we can use it instead of it running off our object um, it sits on and we can use it like a paste so we can it's much like ice in a cake at this stage so we we'll just add a little bit to begin with and then mix it in we need to mix it in properly again with a more robust stick, making sure we get the corners, the sides, the edges. You instantly see it thicken up and becomes a lot more difficult to mix. Now we can just paste it on and know that it won't run off, so we can get the, the thickness even all the way around, all over the object. What we need to do use small circular motions at first to make sure we don't get any air pockets trapped underneath and, and between the two layers of the silicon. And then, and then we can simply just paste it on and make sure we have a nice even layer. It's important to make sure that we have an even layer because um, the fiberglass layer that we put on next is rigid so any undulations or lumps in the surface are going to affect um, how it sits inside, uh, inside the fiberglass jacket which you'll, you'll see later on.